Welcome back, everybody, to episode number three, technically, of our St. Patrick's Day lead-up. So you've already seen our Guinness can versus bottle. Which one is better? You've seen our amazing interview with Steve, which if you haven't seen, go check it out right now. And today we're going to stick with the theme of Guinness a little bit. Because, hey, we're coming up on St. Patrick's Day, right, Alessandro? We want to stick with our theme of Irish beers. We're doing a little bit of a double header, kind of like a double feature. We're going to grab two of Guinness's lagers. We haven't done a lot of lager reviews on the channel. And so they have their Harp Lager, which is going to be the first half of our little double feature. And then we're going to move on to Guinness Blonde, which, and we'll get into this, right? Alessandro, it's technically not an Irish beer. It's brewed in their Baltimore brewery, but it's still under the Guinness umbrella. So to keep with kind of the theme of St. Patrick's Day, we're going to give it a try because it's a beer that we both really like. So we wanted to sneak it into a review. Plus, hell, it's St. Patrick's Day. Exactly, man. Like, come on. And it, I mean, we haven't reviewed many lagers uh, and I'm sure we will in the future. But what a great way to start and especially to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to compare. And as Joe mentioned, uh, the blonde is brewed uh, in the U.S., while the harp is brewed over in Ireland. So it's also, I think, like a great way of comparing uh, two beers that are in the same style, technically, brewed by the same brewery with the same yeast, uh, which we've learned is one of the secret weapons of uh, Guinness. So if you haven't watched it yet, definitely go watch that interview because there's a lot of fun facts there. And so we'll Almost. see how this, plus obviously small other differences uh, in, uh, in the brewing process, is going to affect the... Uh, uh, the taste uh, and our opinion. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Let's get right into it. Since we have a jam-packed episode today, we're doing two reviews in one. I think let's jump right into the harp and let's give our first impressions. Yes. Save this Guinness Blonde for a bit later on. That sounds like a great plan. So actually, Harp Lager is really cool. And I was talking to Alessandro about this before we started filming. It was actually started as a response to the fad of lagers becoming really popular in the UK as well as in Ireland. And so Guinness wanted to have a product that could kind of feed that demand. So they came up with the Harp Lager. Are you two getting on okay? Fine. Time for a sharp exit. Time for a cool, sharp hub. That's amazing. Should we open them? Yes. Let's do it. Couldn't wait. Oh, look at so that sound. sound. It's poor man. Look at that. Nice. As usual, guys, I'm just going to go about one third of the way up the glass to leave room to stick my big old nose in there for smelling purposes. Nice. And I love that you have the vintage label on the bottles. I got the, oh, yeah. the the regular can that's in mass production and most people can find. He's got this really cool vintage looking heart bottle, which I'm really jealous of. I love that color scheme on it. It's so cool. I, I saved it from the 60s. <laughs> You've been holding on to it all this time. Aroma cheers, my friend. Aroma cheers, my friend. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be tasting. Always this a pleasure. Together. Always, especially in the lead up to St. Patrick's Day. Always yes. a pleasure. I'll let you get started, man. What do you think? Tell me about the aroma. Nice. First thing that comes to mind is that nice uh, floor hoppy, mm -hmm. uh, very gentle, bready, uh, crisp, uh, lager-like. Very clean and 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 very. so uh, so you know inviting. Immediately, like you you get your nose in and you say, oh yeah, I want to take a sip. Yeah. And it, it's not incredibly complex. But what's there is just coming through like right clear to your nose. So thinking one out of three, I'm definitely going to give it a two. I don't think it can quite get to three for me, but as far yeah. as lager goes, it's a, it's a high two for me. Like this is, this is a very nice one. Nice. Yeah, that's interesting that you're mentioning as far as a lager goes. And this is something that Alessandro and I have discussed behind the scenes where reviewing lagers gets a little bit tricky. 
Because if you're breaking down the rating system for aroma, for taste, for mouthfeel, lagers tend to be by design a little bit lighter in all those areas. So they tend to score a little bit lower. So it's interesting that you're saying as far as lagers go, it's a two on three. So I guess that's a, it's a different way of approaching it, a kind of different perspective. I'm gonna agree with you. This is a two on three for me as well. And I think it's fair to rate them as far as lagers go and not to compare them to other styles of beer that are more aromatic or that have stronger tastes. You really get the breadiness. Uh, for me, I like to make my own bread and my own pizza dough. And this really smells like once you activate the yeast before you pour it into your dry flour, you know, when you mix up the yeast in some warm water and, and activate yep. it and wake it up a little bit before you pour it in that smell of the yeast. Um, I'm really getting that from this, which is kind of, you know, what you expect from a lager, but like it's, it's kind of multiplied. It's, it's times five. So it's all the goodness of a lager aroma just accentuated. So it's a solid two on three. You know what this means, man? We're past the aroma, we get into the taste. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. That's my favorite part. Uh. Mm. Mm. I've always loved heart. Please go right ahead, sir. Tell me what you think. Initial sweetness, slight acidity on the edge, <laughs> bitterness that is not too overpowering, but just clean and refreshing. And that bready note towards the end yeah. that is just like freshly baked bread. I mean, that's just music and it's so refreshing. So yeah. to me, this, and as Joe mentioned, obviously lagers tend to, if you're thinking about intensity, it's always going to be less compared to ales, but let's not forget that, uh, you know, you always got to keep in mind what is the beer for you, because yeah. once you compare it to a different style, you're going to have like different type of experiences. So, so this is just like more your experience with the beer, as he said. So think about when you compare it, you, you got to compare it to other lagers that you've had. And yeah. to me, compared to all the lagers that I had, this one here, the taste is absolutely perfect. I can't think of anything uh, out of place here. So for me, yeah. this is a three on three on taste. Like it's delicious. I can't mm -hmm. wait to take another sip. You know what, man? I'm gonna agree with you. As far as lagers go, this is absolutely delicious. That breadiness is really present. I, you taste kind of like the, the toasted um, aspect to it as well that's there, which I love. I love that toasted flavor. But it kind of like toasted bread, toasted malts flavor that you love out of a good lager is there. And I also get like a really nice, and this ties into the finish a little bit, so I'll talk about this a little later. I get like a little buttery taste at the end of it too. As far as lagers go, this one is perfect, man. I'm gonna agree with you on this one. It's a three on three on taste for me as well. This is fantastic compared to other lagers. What do you say we freshen up the beers a little bit before the mouth feel? Yeah, it's, it's needed. So let's get a little bit of carbonation in there. A little, little, little bit of carbonation in there. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Mouth feels All nice. right. Cheers. Mm -hmm. mm. Tell me, what do you think? So, mouthfeel is incredibly refreshing. It's not, it's silky without being sticky or oily. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really feels like drinking water. Uh, it leaves all the great taste elements that we've discussed. I'm not going to talk about the finish because that's kind of coming that's coming next uh but as far as mouthfeel again thinking about comparing it to lagers that are other lagers that i've had i really like it it has uh, a, a, a perfect um a perfect representation of what i imagine when i'm thinking i want a nice cold glass of yeah. Uh, lager yeah. yeah so i i can't find any elements that are out of place the, again, the ones that I mentioned are the ones that I recognize, but in a lager, that's exactly what you're looking for, that I'm looking for at least. So it's gonna get a three out of three for me on mouthfeel. Nice. Yeah, for me, for mouthfeel, it's one more sip. It's, you get the silkiness, which is really interesting. I forgot that about this beer. How it does have a really silky mouthfeel. And you also get a really nice tingling from the bitterness because it's very, it's very bitterness forward in that sense. Um, but not in an overpowering way, but that gets by. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in the finish. Uh, but it's fantastic and it's really inviting. It doesn't linger too long. You can feel it. It's light, but it doesn't go unnoticed 
on your tongue or in your mouth. It, it has it has body to it, even though it's a really light beer. What's the uh, the five percent alcohol? So as far as like a lager goes, it's pretty standard. It's not like a light beer. It's it's average. It's right in the middle at five percent. So it has that body like a five plus percent beer would normally have, like you'd expect from it. But it's so silky smooth. Um, if you're comparing it to other lagers, this has got to be a three on three for me as well. We're agreeing all the way through so far, man. Um, okay, so now the finish on this one is really interesting. I have a lot to say. I think you might have too. So go for it. What do you think? Just take another sip, my friend. Just yeah, oh, please do. Please do. It's, it's heavily encouraged. Heavily. And if you're following along with us, take another sip too. It's you earn As always, guys, good point. Good point, Mr. Alessandro. We do recommend that you get yourself whatever beer we're reviewing and follow along with us and see what you think. Rate it yourself. Just adds to the whole experience. So cheers to you, actually. Cheers to you. Mm. So finish. Yeah. Um, incredibly evolving. I know, right? That's the perfect way to describe it. Yeah. yeah it, it just takes you again, like on a little journey. And, and you really got to pay attention to the finish, because if you're just taking the sip and thinking already of the next sip is, you know, it can be a little tricky. But if you take a second and think, you get that initial bitterness that is not overpowering. In the uh, Pilsner or Quell that we tried, it was a little bit more dominant. Here, yeah. it's just there. It sits there like almost like the base, uh, you know, in a band. Like it's there. You can, uh, it's there. You, you don't necessarily always pay attention to it, but it's there. Yeah. And then there's all these other elements coming in and chiming in. And you have that uh, slightly herbal note from the hops. Yeah. You get again that toasted breaded element. Uh, Joe described that yeast forward note that you get that comes again through. And again, like it almost has this cycle that takes you back into wanting to take another sip. And it lingers with you, but not in an unpleasant way. It's just there and it just makes you think, come back, come back. So <laughs> again, like this is a, a great representation of the style for me. So uh, I, I might be leaning on, well, well, what is it? But then I think, uh, how many things I've already have said, so I have to go with a three on this. <laughs> you know what, man? I, it's for all the reasons you said, it's getting a three for me as well on finish. What I really love about it is you get the bitterness. So you get all the amazing taste that we talked about, but they don't linger too much for maybe two seconds. You get the taste and then you get the little, a little bit of acidity uh, from the bitterness that you, you taste there. So you taste the hops after tasting the yeast, after tasting all those delicious kind of fruity toasted flavors. But then for me, like I kind of hinted at before, I get this nice buttery finish. I'm really tasting butter on it. I, I, I don't know exactly what is in it that would be causing that sort of, what I'm interpreting as being a buttery uh, taste kind of on the finish, but I'm getting that after the bitterness dissipates, it leaves a kind of nice buttery taste for me on my tongue for a good one, two seconds and just makes me salivate and want to go in and take another sip. So it's a three on three for me for finish. And I'm going to go right into it. And I, I don't want to wait. In terms of a lager, this is a three on three experience for me as well. It's getting a three on three overall. It's close. This was so close to being a perfect beer, I think, for both of us. What do you think is an overall experience? I, I was going to say, like, I mean, I'm leaning heavily towards three all, all the way through. So I'm, I would have given it like a three, two. So it's, it's a three on three for me for sure. Guys, Harp Lager, leading up to St. Patrick's Day. The, the Irish know what they're doing with their beers. I got to give it to them. Oh yeah, they really do. Guinness knows what they're doing as well. We got to give it to them. So we are going to do a quick swap over to Guinness Go on part two of our double feature. Here we have for you guys today, a bonus beer, if you will. Part two of our Guinness double feature here today, Guinness Blonde.
So like we talked about before, this isn't actually brewed in Ireland. It's brewed in Baltimore, where Guinness has a secondary brewery. And they kind of, they do their own things. They come up with a lot of their own recipes and they brew things that aren't brewed in the Irish St. James Gate Brewery in Dublin. This is one of the creations that they came up with, Guinness Blonde. Now, Sandra, is there anything you know about this beer that you want to tell our audience before we crack them open and get started? Well, uh, the first and important thing to know about this is that even if it's still in the lager family, uh, it's uh, taking more an American twist. So it's using hops uh, that are only coming from North America. So uh, the variety of hops that are used are going to give obviously like a big flavor impact because they are one of the few ingredients that you have in beer. So it's going to be interesting, uh, you know, just to compare it since we just had the harp. Uh, that is brewed uh, more using European uh, hot varieties and see how that like kind of impacts. So this is a more an American version uh, of the lager still using the Guinness yeast, which is their uh, secret ingredient that obviously it's impossible to replicate. So it does have ties to Ireland then, so it's not completely an American creation, so it fits right into our St. Patrick's Day celebration. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, in Guinness, it's still Guinness, so let's, let's test it out, my friend. Let's crack them open. So from what I remember of this, it's a little bit darker. Oh yeah, there you go. A little bit darker. We're gonna see it's a little bit more flavorful, a little bit more aromatic in a different way as well. So I'll let you get started. Aroma cheers. Let me know what you think. Aroma cheers. Oh wow, this is completely different. <laughs> it's so different, right? Like how are these both lagers? It's kind of crazy to think. So wow. Uh, first thing I think, tropical fruits uh, and citrus, uh, orange peel mango which is you know something that normally you don't necessarily associate with uh with lagers but uh and, and I'm, when i'm saying those uh you know the scriptures don't think about them as like super potent we're still talking about subtle and very gentle uh, but compared to uh, the harp that we just had they're definitely there and they're taking the beer in a completely different direction and that's all coming from the hops that are being used uh, as far as my personal preference, and always keep that in mind when you're looking at our reviews, because that's just our personal opinion, I tend to lean, when I think about lager, I tend to lean a little bit more forward towards uh, the uh, European style uh, lager. Uh, but this doesn't mean that this is unpleasant. Uh, I still think that the aromas are like balanced and there and very, uh, very complex. So. Out of three, I'm gonna give it still a two, like I did with the uh, with the harp, uh, but for different reasons because they they are presenting uh, some aromas that not normally you find in a lager. I agree with you that I really appreciate the European style of lager a little bit more. And for this on the aroma, it's very aromatic. It's very nice. It's very strong. It's very potent. You get a lot out of the glass when you pour it out, and the citrus notes are so strong. I mean, you get orange peel, kind of like maybe orange zest, right? You get a, I, I get like a little bit of mango, maybe a touch of lemon, something like a really acidic kind of fruit. That's like, like lemon lime is in there as well. I even get like a little bit of banana. So some sweeter fruits kind of mixed all together. But you know, I'm not getting any of like the, uh, like the toasted malt. I'm not, I'm not getting any of like these, those aromas that I really love from the heart that I really do appreciate in a lager. This almost smells like an IPA to me, like a really citrusy IPA more than it does a lager. And you know me, I'm not, if for anybody who doesn't know, I'm not like a big IPA fan and I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of citrus elements in beer unless it's really done right and balanced really well in a kind of more of a mild way. Uh, so for me personally, this is a one on three for aroma. It's very nice, nothing's overpowering, nothing's offensive. It's very, very nice. It's just not up my alley. And I would like a little bit more of like the toasted malt element there. I would like a little something, more of those bready aromas uh, that I like out of my lagers. It's just a personal preference, but it's a one on three. So now we're up to our favorite step here, the taste. Cheers, sir. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Ooh. I haven't had this one in a while. I forgot what it tasted like. So interesting. Uh, well, on the nose, 
it was mostly a citrus and hop forward in the sense of like the aromas coming from the hops. I find that on the palate, uh, and again, like this is leaning again, a little bit more towards the, the aroma part, but it has almost more like a cracker feeling. That's the first thing that I thought when I took a sip, like it's more, not bready, but it's almost like a cracker a kind of a toasted note. Um, uh, and as far as other elements that I get, uh, the sweetness for sure is a little bit more forward. It, uh, the bitterness is there, but it's, it's really just, they're very subtle. Um, and I'll say like, I really like that cracker uh, aroma that is coming through more from the retronasal experience uh, than I didn't, I honestly didn't get that or picked it up from the, from the nose at first. Um, I like it. But I, I will agree on Joe on the fact that I tend to like, especially on the taste, I would like a little bit more of that toasted element, uh, that breaded element. Uh, so on this, on the taste, I'm gonna lean on a one. Not because it's a bad beer, it's just like to my preference, uh, it tends to fall a little bit more on the one category. Yeah, um, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry, Guinness, maybe it's the, maybe it's the, the American style lager elements, like the influences there that you're talking about. But I get a lot more of the hops on the taste. That bitterness is there. It ends with a really nice kind of silky, bready flavor in the end. Uh, but that gets into the finish. So from the taste right off the bat, you get a little bit of the citrus. It's very hop forward for me, I find. So it's very bitter. Um, there's a not, It's missing a lot of those elements that I like out of a lager. So if I'm comparing it to the style, and specifically to the heart that we just had as well, um, it's good. It's balanced. Nothing stands out as being, like I said, nothing's offensive. Um, I don't think it's bad in any way, but I think it's a one on three. It's just, it's nice. It's a really, really nice taste. It's a nice lager. Um, but there's some things there that I find are missing and it, it's just not to my personal taste. So it's a one on three for me as well. What do you think about the mouthfeel? Let me refresh it because we don't want to. Yeah, I think we know. need to. Yeah. Uh, Especially yeah. for mouthfeel. Yeah, the mouthfeel, like you, you got to get like a little bit of that carbonation there. Cheers. Mm. So I find it uh, a little bit more, uh, while on the harp, I really like that very silky and light presence. I find this one here a little bit more heavy, uh, so to speak. It's not sticky or oily, but it has a little bit more of a heavy presence on the mouth. Without talking about the finish, which we'll come to next. But again, uh, comparing it just because we just had the harp, for me, this definitely falls into uh, the one category. Just a personal preference, nothing wrong with the beer at all. Like, and again, let's not forget that one, two, and three are all different degrees of good. It's just like what we personally uh, think about it, what we like it in different degrees. So I like it, uh, but definitely uh, it's that heaviness that I find there, it tends to bring it a little notch down. So. Let's call it a very high one. I don't think we've given it a very high one yet. So I'm gonna give my first heavy high one uh, to the Guinness Blonde. That's our first really high one, you're right. You know what, man, I, I gotta agree with you and it's a one on three for me as well. I feel as though it is, really heavy is a good way to describe it. It's really heavy on the tongue and, and in your mouth. And one thing that I find is that maybe because it, it's really bitter and this is the style, but I find it just that tingling sensation from the bitterness just stays on my tongue a little bit longer than I normally like out of a beer that is a lager. So when I'm drinking a lager, I want it to be a little bit smoother in that sense. I want it to be a little bit more easy drinking. And this is kind of pushing the pale ale IPA category a little bit much, which makes sense because I mean, IPAs are huge in the States more so than they are in let's say Europe, right? So I think that makes sense that these influences and that those tastes are there for that particular market that this was brewed for. Um, but it's a one on three mouthfeel. That tingly, the bitterness is just a little bit too strong. It lasts a little bit too long. Um, there isn't anything else there to really complement it. And again, anything one to three is just different degrees of good. If we don't like something, it's a zero. It's good, it's good. And finish, what do you think? So let me take another sip. Mm. So I'll say that on the finish, I actually taste a lot of different things again. Uh, I don't think to the degree of the experience I had with the, uh, the harp, at least for me, 
But I like that it starts with that bitterness that we both described, that is there definitely, way more compared to the harp. Um, but it evolves, and I really like that tingling uh, crackery. I, I keep referring it as crackery because I can't find yeah. like a better way. It's an interesting description. But but it has that element that is very unique, and uh, I'll say that uh, again, like when I find something unique that I haven't tasted in other beers, like and it, it it's it's evolving. I, I don't think it's pushing the three, but definitely it deserves a two for me on the finish because it has those elements that are particular. And uh, while uh, it's, you know, uh, on, maybe on the taste and on the mouthfeel is falling a little short to me, uh, here it's uh, pushing it a little bit more up and wanting me to go back to the glass. I had to take another sip just to refresh it a little bit. I keep looking for something else on the finish. I keep expecting there to be more. Uh, it's interesting you described it as being something a little bit unique. For me, the experience that I'm having with it right now is kind of a bit of the opposite. I'm not getting anything interesting there. Aside from the bitterness that sticks around on the finish, I taste a bit of those citrus elements that you get right away on the taste and on the aroma. Those stay on the finish for me a little bit, but then I'm just looking for something else and there's nothing else there. It's really, it's pleasant. It's really nice. It's a really well-brewed, well-balanced beer. And if you're really into pale ales, IPAs, things that are a little bit more hop forward, I think you're really gonna love this beer and you're really gonna enjoy it. It's, it's kind of like the marriage between a lager and a pale ale, I think. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, but for me, again, it's just not what I'm looking for out of a lager and it doesn't really meet my taste. I'm staying consistent with this. It's gonna be a one on three for me. And I'll just, I'll cap off my review with the overall. I went ones all the way through. I think it's a one on three overall for me too as an overall experience. It's nice. It's a nice beer at pouring one out and sipping on it. It's enjoyable, um, but I've had better. <laughs> I've had ones that meet my taste. At least it's it's subjective, right? So I've had ones that meet my taste a little bit better. It's still very, it's a good beer. It's a really, really good beer. I'd drink it again. I'll agree with you on the overall experience, even if like on a couple of elements, I went a little bit higher because they had these distinct. And, and to me, again, like when I find like the reason why I gave it a two, for example, on the finish is because I found something that is new. It's like it's something that is introducing me to an element that I hadn't noticed before that is I find like slightly different. But obviously each person has a different approach uh, depending on the previous experience. And so uh, to me, like that two there, for example, or on the aroma is because I, I was taking me on a new adventure. Uh, but on the overall experience, I think I'm going to lean more towards the one because it's again, like in the style and the type, uh, more uh, leaning in the nice category than in the uh, two category, which is like good. Uh, so it's a great beer. Definitely would have it again. Uh, but uh, overall experience, I'm going to stick with the one. All right. So just to summarize, now that we've done our little double feature of Guinness Lager reviews. So for the harp, Alessandro and I actually came up with the final, the same final score of 4.66 on five, which is an outstanding beer. Heart is pretty damn good. I was impressed by this. This is an incredible lager. For Guinness Blonde, it came out a little bit different. Scored a little bit lower than I expected, especially on my end. My final score was 1.67 on five. And Alessandro's was a little higher. He had a 2.33 on five for Guinness Blonde. And in our rating system, these both come out to a nice beer. So it's still a nice, enjoyable beer experience, but not up there like the harp is. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a really good lead up to St. Patrick's Day. I know we can't really go out and celebrate the way that we wanted to, but hopefully these videos give you a little bit of the St. Patrick's Day spirit. We appreciate you joining us for the ride. We got one more episode coming that's gonna be dropping on St. Patrick's Day, so keep an eye open for that one. Guys, cheers. Don't forget to close your uh, leading up to St. Patrick's Day beer brackets. You can open your St. Patrick's Day beer brackets now if you'd like, you know? Open that a couple of days before St. Patrick's Day. Close your St. Patrick's Day beer brackets on St. Patrick's Day or not, and everything in between. Let us know down in the comments, what do you think about Harp? What do you think about Guinness Blonde? Were we a little bit too harsh on Guinness Blonde? Are you a fan of it? Do you like the bitterness? Let us know down below. Like the video if you got a kick out of it. We hope to see you guys soon. Take care and cheers. Cheers.